Hey, this is Jerry from Blizz Studio. In our last tutorial, we set up the score for the game. Now, what's coming up? We're gonna be working on setting up a game over. So we're gonna set up the condition of game over, and when the ball hits the bottom of the screen, then we're gonna cause the game over UI to pop up. And we're also gonna create that game over UI. If you're ready to get started, let's go. So in our last demo, we added score to the game. Now, what we're gonna do is to look at adding a game over. So we need to do a couple things, and one is to add a game over UI. In my UI folder, I wanna go ahead and create a new canvas. And with that canvas, I'm gonna create a panel, okay? So if we go to UI and then uh, a new canvas, and then I'm gonna call that UI dash game over, okay? And then inside of that, I'm gonna create a new canvas. I'm gonna create a new panel, and that panel is just gonna act as a cover over top of the game. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just select a new color here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just go with that kind of more purpley, a really dark purpley theme. And I think that looks good. And then I'm gonna darken that up a little bit so that we kind of have something that kind of really just pushes back the, the game elements. Okay, so that, that, that works. Now let's go ahead and we also need to add some text. So I'm gonna go into my canvas and UI and Text Mesh Pro. And then with this, I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on that text so we can zoom to where it's at within our scene. Zoom out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the, the edges of where that text is and go ahead and just drag it all the way out to the edge so that we can make sure that this is centered based off of the width of the, the UI, okay? So I have that text selected. I'm gonna go over into my inspector panel and go ahead and, and bold that. I'm gonna go ahead and center it both uh, horizontally and vertically within that box. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the scale of this. And first, let me just change the text to game over. And we'll go ahead and just all cap that text. I'm gonna go ahead and just change the color of it to be kind of go along with this kind of pinky theme that we've got. And then I'm gonna increase the size quite a bit. Something like that. And that, that works. Okay, so we have this UI set up. And then I might move this text up just a little bit. There we go. All right, now that we have that set up, I need to turn this UI off, okay? Because we, we originally want our UI to be off. So when we have a condition of game over, we need to turn that game UI on, okay? So, but we need it off initially. So I have it turned off. Now let's go ahead and go into our managers and I'm gonna create a new empty game object and I'll call this game over manager. And with that, I need to go ahead and create a new FSM and I'm going to go ahead and again name this FSM game over and then what is it we want to do well how, what's the condition of uh, us having the game be over right so what I want to do is when the ball hits the bottom of the screen that's when we want to start our game over so I have the beginnings of a FSM and I want to go ahead and have this first state be game over detection or maybe bottom detection because we're what we're doing is we're if the player hits the bottom or if the ball hits the bottom that's when we're going to spawn game over so let's go uh, ball detection okay so we're going to be listening for if the ball hits the detection so how we're going to do that is with a collision event so collision event right there going to add that in and then what is it that we are um, detecting? So we need to choose a specific game object and up in my walls, I have walls bottom. So I'm gonna drag that in there. And then when the ball hits that bottom is when we're gonna spawn the game over. So we need to uh, have a game object with a tag to be able to detect. So with our ball, we just wanna make sure that our ball has a tag of ball, okay? which it does. Uh, if you don't have the ball tag, you can go and add a ball tag and uh, add that there. 
Okay, so with that with that selected, um, I'm going to go down to my tags and choose ball. So when the ball hits the wall bottom, we want to send an event. Okay, so let's just create a new event, and I'm going to call this game over. And it's saying, hey, you don't have a global transition um, or a transition. So I'm going to click on that, and it adds a transition to my state. Now I need to drag over. So when the ball does hit, we need to go to a new state. Okay, so when it detects those two things hitting each other. All right, so what is it we want to do within the uh, actual game over state? So let's go and first of all, type in game over. And then what is it, what is it we want to do? One, the first thing is we want to spawn the game over UI. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So what I'm going to do is to activate game object because we initially have that UI turned off, so we've got this unchecked, we need to actually recheck that to make sure that it's on, okay? So I've got my game uh, activate game object. I need to choose a specific game object. I'm gonna choose the UI game over, and then with the activate button checked, all that really does is just goes up and checks the uh, button for that game object. So it turns it on, okay? So let's try that real quick. If I move my controller out of the way, boom, we do spawn the game over UI. Okay, so there's a couple other things that we need to do here. One is I don't want my paddle to continue to move, okay? So we need to turn that off. So we're controlling that up here in our controller FSM, okay? So yeah, I'm gonna first lock this uh, Playmaker FSM so that I don't go off of this screen. Then what I'm going to do is go to my controller and where it says my Playmaker FSM, I'm going to drag that down into my state of game over and then I want to set property, okay? And then it's saying, hey, what property is it that you want to set? Well, I'm going to choose to have where it says enabled, click enabled, and then the value is off, okay? So what it's doing is just unchecking this. So then I won't be able to move my controller at all. Okay, so we've got that going on. Let's go back to our game over. And so that's gonna turn the movement of the paddle off. The other thing is I don't want that ball to continually bounce. So there's a couple different ways that we could do that. One would be to just deactivate that ball game object, um, which is definitely one way uh, to do it. But another way, just so I can show to do this, would be to scale time. Okay, so currently in a game, time is one equals one. Um, the faster, if I want a game to go faster to speed up, I would increase that number. And if I want to slow it down, I would decrease the number. And then of course, if I want to stop time, I change it to zero. Okay, so let's go and type in scale time. Here we go, we've got scale time. So I'm gonna add that in. And I can animate, animate this value if I want, um, so where it kind of slows down and then stops. But in this case, I'm just going to hit zero so that it stops time right where it's at. Okay, so let's give that a try real quick. So I hit play. And we've got one score there. Move out of the way, and boom. Our controller is no longer movable. Our ball stops exactly where it's at, so time has stopped. And there we go. We've added a game over UI. We've detected if the ball has hit the bottom of the screen. We've then spawned that game over UI, and we've stopped time, and we stopped our controller from moving. So there we go, we set up a game over UI. We also set up the conditions for game over. So when the ball hits the bottom of the screen, it's game over and the UI pops up. So what's coming up next? In the next tutorial, we're gonna start looking at resetting the game. So we're gonna add a button to the UI that when we hit restart, it'll reset the game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next video is available. Until next time, peace.